Alright guys, welcome back to another M Crater tutorial. So today what we're going to be covering is the flashlight. Obviously, it's something that somebody re requested and um, there was a comment saying how to do it. And I thought I would play around with it. It's a little bit more complicated than what uh, they were thinking, but um, yeah, it basically allows you to use movement, or not movement, um, uh, ray tracing to kind of place a line of blocks in front of you so you can basically light up the area now it will stop when it reaches a solid block that's why you're not seeing any updates uh, some blocks though for example if we can find some gravel uh, we can light it up so we can see where gravel is but um, some blocks such as gravel will actually fall down uh, when these blocks are updated. We can kind of do that and you can see that it will fall down. Uh, that's due to the gravity uh, because the blocks are being placed right next to it. So it's going to trigger the blocks for the gravel to update. But uh, outside of that, it's pretty uh, reliable. Uh, it doesn't work underwater, unfortunately. It's kind of... Um, buggy when it goes underwater and stuff like that but i tried to add support for it that's interesting very interesting i guess it has something to do with the uh mine shaft up there but um yeah so it works uh you can turn on and off the the light light uh, flashlight and it will update so uh with the water thing though uh we might be able to demonstrate it here and you can kind of see that it kind of bubbles a little bit. And that's due to how the blocks basically get replaced and stuff like that. So it doesn't really work underwater. Like, well, it sort of does, I guess, but not, not very well. So um, that's about the extent of it. But, I mean, for land and stuff like that, it's perfect for what you need to actually see with. So... Um, actually, look at that. That almost worked perfectly. <laughs> Alright, anyhow. Um, yeah, so I'll show you how to create it. Uh, it's actually pretty straightforward. There's only like five procedures, one block, and two items. So, it's a pretty easy tutorial to do. So, we'll go into mCreator right now, and then I'll cover that. Alright, so the first one that we should probably cover is the item on and off. So, we want... To create a item I've added a custom model uh, you guys can use the model if you want uh, for the flashlight it's the item that was basically used in the um, in-game so this is the off version and then there is a on version as well um, properties nothing really spectacular going on here I've just set the maximum size for the item to be one uh, this is just because um, it would be really complicated to stack up to like 64 per item and it's not really a item that needs to be stacked it's more of a tool so um, usually tools have only a stack size of one uh, food properties didn't use them advanced prop or advanced properties like inventories and stuff doesn't have it um, we do have a right click when right clicked uh, position or uh, trigger so we'll cover that in a little bit uh, there's also one for the on one as well same thing uh, this is using a on model and then we have again stack size of one food properties nothing advanced properties nothing and triggers we have two triggers uh, we have uh, the right click turn it back to the off um, off flashlight and then we have one for the uh, actual running of the script so when it's in the main hand of the um, or when item in hand tick so when it's in the hand of the player what it's going to do is going to be running the actual script for uh, placing the blocks and stuff like that so we'll cover the right click for the off one first because it's pretty much the same thing as the other one so what we need to do is we need to test if the item is in the main hand of the provided entity. Uh, you can switch this over to the offhand. I think it should work uh, for the most part, but um, generally you want to have it in your main hand. Um, and then what we're doing is we're going to set the main hand of the provided entity. Again, if you wanted to 
change how this is basically set up, you would need to switch switch the blocks over from main hand to uh, the offhand one. So this one right here, we're using that one. And then I'm getting the number of the item in the provided stack. So basically in the main hand, which is the provided item stack, and then we're basically just testing or getting the amount of numbers and switching it over to the on flashlight. So that's basically what that one does. Uh, the off one, or that's the off one does. And then we have the on one, which is basically the exact same thing. We're just turning it to the off state. Now this should support um, multiple items, uh, but again, you don't really need multiple items for the actual um, like tools and stuff like that. So it only really needs to do it once. So that's basically that. And then we have the tick update, which is a little bit more complicated. Um, it's not too complicated once you know what, what things are doing. So again, uh, what we're doing here um, is we're going to run it on server side. Now this has to be run on server side because I noticed that um, the ver like the uh, system was kind of flickering and if it wasn't running on server side properly so I uh, basically put it on to server side and once it's uh, running like that it was a lot smoother at least for the land and then we're setting at a local distance to one now what this is going to do is it's going to offset the variables that you can see along here uh, to one and it's going to run the amount of 17 times forward of the direction the player is looking at so basically what that does is it's going to count from 1 to 17 and once it's done that it's going to if we scroll down all the way to the bottom here it's going to basically increase the distance by one so it's basically pasting a long line wherever the player is looking at, depending on what angle or whatever, it's going to calculate all that automatically. And that's due to the ray tracing distance. So we're using X, Y, and Z for the coordinates. Uh, what we're doing here is, I believe this is for water, but it doesn't really work. And then what we're doing down here is basically for the um, other thing. I think that's for water, is it? Um, yeah, I think it's basically trying to test if the block is a flashlight block. We haven't covered that part yet. So let's cover the flashlight block first. It'll make sense a little bit more. So again, I'm just using an empty texture with no um, pixels or anything. It's just completely transparent for the actual light block. Bounding box I've set to 888 and 888. Uh, the reason why is because if you were to hit the hitbox, uh, with the ray tracing, it would basically bring the light source forward uh, to that particular block that you hit. So this basically disables the hitbox. Uh, you could basically, I think, just remove the hitbox altogether and that would work too. But I set it to 888 just so it was basically uh, hidden completely. It doesn't have any particular hitbox for it to work with um outside of that there is these materials uh you might be able to fix the water issue with uh setting up the liquid or setting it up to be water and it's already configured for water logging so that's not the issue it's just um i think properties or something like that that's causing the issue i'm not sure what um i'll play around with it a little bit longer if i manage to fix it then I'll patch the workspace up uh, on the GitHub, but I'm not sure exactly what's going on with the water logging. Like some th sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know what's going on though. But um, yeah, so there's that. And then what we have is, um, I just basically made the block sound to be powdered snow. I couldn't really think of material that would actually make it sound well. Uh, we want to be able to walk through the block. So I've enabled that. And then under advanced properties, I have the tick rate set to one. That's very important. And then the block color on map is set to error. So basically uh, this won't uh, show any color changes to the map when it's basically going to place these blocks down. It's just gonna keep it as um, error. So it won't show any particular color. 
Um, as far as a uh, reaction to being pushed, I have it to ignore uh, just because uh, it doesn't really need to be pushed at all, so it doesn't matter. And the AI pathfinding, what I have set is to open so entities can still walk through it. And we do need uh, to enable block entity for this particular thing. We do use some MBT in this particular block. So we need to set the inventory to, or the sl inventory slot size to zero and uncheck these two box. But we need to make sure that this is checked. Uh, fluid storage, we didn't use it. And then we have two things that we're having here. One is when the block is placed down or added. Uh, this one is basically just running it on server side. Again, we need to make sure that everything is on server side, except for when we do the right click events. Um, reason being, it's just not synchronized between the player and the visual thing. So we need to make sure that it's running on just one side. So we're just setting a delay to um, five ticks. So basically it will count down every five ticks and try to replace itself. Uh, this is basically the script that it does that with. So basically we're again running it on server side and then we're setting testing if the delay is set to something greater than zero. So if it's not zero, but greater than that, we're basically going to decrease the value of the delay for how long that block is going to be there for uh, by one. So if it reaches zero, which is the only other condition that it will basically run or zero or less basically and then it's going to test if it's a fluid source so if it is a fluid source um, then what we're doing is we're replacing the block um, at the current location where the script is running from uh, to a water source and then if it is a not a water source then we're replacing it with air just regular air because it doesn't really matter what kind of air just we, the regular ones fine uh, we're also removing the block uh, that's important because um, I think that needed to be done in order for it to be smooth but I'm not sure if that's the issue with it being under water it might be because technically it would turn it into air first so you might have to remove that block here for the water one but uh, that's basically the script for the block and generation there's nothing anything going on here so um, so back to the script uh, again it's running 17 times this is basically testing if the block is the flashlight block if it's a water source and if the block is or if the block is just a flashlight block that isn't a water source now if it is that then it's what it's testing for is if the delay time of that block is set to or less than five ticks if it's less than five ticks then what it's doing is it's going to set the block delay variable to five ticks. Now the reason for that is we want to keep the tick rate up uh, above zero before it will switch over. Uh, the reason why is it's going to despawn um, again using the script for um, where is it the this part right here. So this basically despawns the block right. So we want to make sure that when we're running this script, it will stay in place until we move the the angle of where the player is looking at. And that will kind of despawn it when it needs to be despawned. But if the player is still looking in that location, if the flashlight is on, then we want it to kind of still be there. Right. So uh, that's why we're setting the variable to a higher number. And then down below, this is just basically um, the script that we're testing for if um again this is the else statement so we have the main script here and then we have an else statement this is where the actual placement properties of the thing happens so we're testing if it's error um this basically will replace it with our flashlight block we want to make sure that it does not keep the state and does not use mbt data uh, or keeps the mbt data and then if it's not error then what we're testing is if it's a water source and if it is a fluid source so basically a material of water and a fluid source so if it's a solid block of water then what we want to do is we want to replace the flashlight with the um and what is that called again i think it's a block 
it's not block data it's um block state so it's a block block state it's uh recently added in 2022.2 or 0.1 but you can get a plugin for it for older versions and what this basically does is we're just testing or applying the waterlogged um basically the block state to true so this will make it a uh, solid block of water but the problem with that again is basically it's basically not um working underwater so it might not be necessary for this part right down here and then again after that's all done it's just increasing the distance so it will go a little bit further uh, you can set the the total distance so if you wanted to go further than 17 you could set it to like 32 or whatever and it will go further uh, there are some limitations obviously it's going to brighten things up behind the player as well a little bit um, just up to the point where depending on how l bright your actual block is uh, this is due to just the mechanics how the game works again if we go to the properties you can see that we have it set for luminescence uh, to 12 so it's going to kind of wherever the block is it's going to still go be around where that block is for about 12 blocks and uh, if you have it a lower number then it's not going to be as bright but it will be um, more direct uh, the problem with that though is it's not bright so uh, i found 12 is pretty good for the light level and uh, the light tr light op opacity is basically 15 so basically it's transparent so outside of that that's all there is really to it um you know just a single block two items the four five procedures so if you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comments i'll make sure to provide the link to this workspace on github so you'll be able to go ahead and grab the procedures and everything like that as well the as well as the assets and the um the block textures and stuff like that so if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i will see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out